Never let him see you sweat. And the him is with a small h. We're going to talk about it, so let's get started. Hey, child of God, welcome to the Rich Thoughts webcast brought to you by the Debt Free Army. Hey, the t today's teaching is entitled, Seven Reasons to Never Let Him, and that's with a small h, see you sweat. You remember back in 1964, the Gillette Corporation came up with a new antiperspirant called Dry Idea. And to promote it, uh, an ad guy came up with the slogan, Never Let Them See You Sweat. Now, he's the same guy that came up with the slogan for the Navy that said it's not a job, it's an adventure. But in case you are too young or you've forgotten about never let them see you sweat, they got celebrities. Donna Karen, the, well, the designer, uh, Dan Reeves, the football coach, Lauren Hutton, the model and actress, Elaine Boozler, the comedian. And what these celebrities would do would be to share things that you should never do in their commercials. And then they always conclude the ad, the ad by saying, never let them see you sweat. And again, the hymn in this, is with a small h. And I'm talking about the enemy, Beelzebub, Beelzebub. Did you get that? Beelzebub, or, you know, the, you know, the host of hell. Never let them see you sweat over things that they're trying to bring on, bring on you or create in your life. But there's seven reasons you should never let him see you sweat. Number one, never let him see you sweat when you're disappointed. Now, here's the great news. Regardless of the intensity of the enemy's attack, you will never be put to shame or disappointed. I'm not making this up. In fact, it is in the scripture, and I'm going to share with you some scripture verses that prove this point. First, Psalm 25, verse 3 in the Amplified Bible. Yes, let none who trust and wait hopefully and look for you be put to shame or be disappointed. Let them be ashamed who forsake the right or deal treacherously without a cause. Psalm 25, 20 in the Amplified Bible. Oh, keep me, Lord, and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed or disappointed. For my trust and my refuge are in you. Third, Romans 9, 33 in the Amplified. As it is written, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone that will make men stumble, a rock that will make them fall. But he who believes in him, who adheres to, trusts in, and relies on him, shall not be put to shame or disappointed in his expectations. Not particularly like that last part of the verse, shall not be disappointed in his expectations. And one more. See, God's not only going to make sure you're not disappointed, He's going to make sure that you're rewarded for what you're going through. Proverbs 23, 18, and the New Living Translation. You will be rewarded for this. Your hope will not be disappointed. Can somebody say hallelujah? Number two, when you're afraid, don't let him see you sweat when you're afraid. Now, he should never do that, especially when you consider that 26 times in the King James Version of the Bible, we're told to be not afraid. Now, you think one time would be enough, but 26 times. And yet in the Message Bible, 44 times we're told, don't be afraid. And in the New Living Translation, 66 times. Don't be afraid. So I think it's fair to say that God is wanting us to get this. And see, there are a number of reasons for us not to be afraid. But number one and most important of all is the devil is no match for the one that's on our team, on our side. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15 says, Thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. You don't have to be afraid you don't have to be afraid of what you can see. Uh, 1 Samuel 28, 13. Be not afraid of what sawest thou. You don't have to be afraid of what you heard. 2 Kings 19, 6. Be not afraid of the words thou hast heard. Mark chapter 5, verse 36. See, here, here's really the key. Uh, and this is the key. This sums it all up why you don't have to be afraid. The key to it is in this scripture. Be not afraid. Only believe. Be not afraid, only believe. And truthfully, you will be rewarded for not being afraid. 
Genesis chapter 15, verse 1 in the Message Bible. After all these things, this, this word of God came to Abram in a vision. Don't be afraid, Abram. I'm your shield. Your reward will be grand. How? Hallelujah. Well, that's two of them. We'll pick it up right after this. You know, there's all different kinds of money. There's hard-earned money, inherited money, stolen money, gambling money, and the list goes on and on. I'm Harold Herring, president of the Debt Free Army, and I'm here to tell you about a very different kind of money, miracle money. I've discovered that God's miracle money is available not just to a select few, but to those who know how to reach out and receive it. I want to send you a free copy of a book that I helped develop and publish entitled Miracle Money. God told me to put this book into the lives of those who had the faith to pick up the phone and call 1-800-DEBT-FREE. If you're suffering economic hardship, if it seems you just can't make ends meet financially, then this may be the most important phone call you'll ever make. The book is free. The call is free. So why not pick up the phone right now and call 1-800-DEBT-FREE? Learn about the miracle money God's holding for you. Call 1-800-DEBT-FREE. Welcome back. We're talking about seven reasons never to let the enemy, never let him, small h, see you sweat. Number one, don't let him see you sweat when you're disappointed. Number two, don't let him see you sweat when you're afraid. And number three, don't let him see you sweat when you don't know what to do. When you don't know what to do. One thing's for sure, you may not know what to do, but he does. And he'll tell you. Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6 in the Message Bible. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen. Listen. For God's voice and everything you do, everywhere you go, He's the one who will keep you on track. Whether you're in the midst of a storm or a financial firefight, you know, what you need to know is this Scripture says don't try to figure it out on your own because He'll help you figure it out. But you must listen to God's voice in everything you do. Isaiah 48, 17 in the King James. Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, which teacheth thee the prophet, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shalt go. Not only should you quit worrying and listen to his voice, but you need to realize he's the one that's going to teach you how to profit in every situation. Now, according to Strong's Concordance, the word prophet is a Hebrew word. It's almost like y'all, but it's Y-A apostrophe A-L, H-3276. And prophet means gain, benefit, Prophet. So, child of God, you need to be encouraged to follow His divine direction. Never let Him see you sweat because you will be sustained in every attack. And not only that, God is going to cause you to profit, gain, and benefit from the attacks of the enemy. But the key is following His directions. We must obey and understand. I want to give you Isaiah 48, 17 again, but this time in the Message Bible. I am God, your God, who teaches you how to live right and well. I'll show you what to do and where to go. He shows us what to do and where to go. Now, Psalm 119, verse 60, and the New Living Translation. I will hurry without delay to obey your commandments. When we follow His instructions, we get His approval. In fact, you need to just personalize that and say it this way. If I follow His instructions, I will have God's approval. If I follow His instructions, I will have God's approval. Now, how do I know that? I'm not making it up because Psalm 90, verse 17 in the New Living Translation says, And may the Lord our God show us His approval and make our efforts successful. Yes, make our efforts successful. So, if you want to be successful, then you obey His instructions and he'll show you, he'll give you his approval and tell you exactly what to do. Number four, when you spent every cent you've got, when you spent every cent you've got, don't let him see you sweat. God reminded me that there's a, how we can overlook mistakes in financial judgment and decisions we make. John 5, 16, I'm sorry, James 5, 16 says, confess your faults. You know what? I want to hold on that a minute. I, I'm just feeling stirred. I want to go back because I really want you to get a hold of Psalm 9017. 
Um, May the Lord, I'm going to read it again, but listen to the way I read it this time. This is in the New Living Translation. And may the Lord our God show Harold his approval and make Harold's efforts successful. Yes, make Harold's efforts successful. I, I feel impressed to have you personalize Psalm 90 verse 17 because it's really important for you to understand that God wants to show you his approval. For instance, if you want to do husband and wife, you could put in may the Lord our and may the Lord Alan Janine's God show them his approval and make their efforts successful. Yes, make Alan Janine efforts successful. You need to personalize this scripture. Get a hold of it. If you do what he tells you to do, then you'll get his approval and you'll be successful in everything you do. This bears repeating and emphasizing because it's a promise to you. Follow his instructions, you'll get his approval, and you'll be successful in everything that you do. Well, time just ran out. So I tell you what, I'll be back tomorrow, and we'll finish this up. But before you go, up at the top of the screen where it says sow a seed, just double click and ask God if today is the day he'd have you sow a precious seed into the ministry of the Debt Free Army and the Rich Thoughts Television Network. Just do what he says. That's all. I ask. Until we meet again, happy trails and keep thinking rich thoughts.